Hi, this is Rachel Goklosky from Cooking with Mrs. G. And today we're going to learn how to identify, harvest, and process elderberries. Identifying elderberry can be difficult for some beginners. So here is dogwood. As you can see, the little green berries and the flowers, when the flowers are in season, can look extremely similar to elderberry. But the big difference here is in the leaves. Dogwood leaves are a simple leaf. As you can see, here is the leaf stalk. And one simple leaf with a smooth edge is on the dogwood. However, here is an elderberry bush. Here is the leaf stalk on the elderberry bush. One leaf stalk then gives way to many leaflets. And each leaflet on the elderberry bush has a serrated edge to it. Not a smooth edge. You can see it looks like a, the edge of the leaf looks like a serrated knife. It's not a smooth edge. And there are many leaflets coming off of one leaf stalk. So once you notice that the dogwood has one simple leaf with a smooth edge and the elderberry has a compound leaf with many leaflets and each one of the leaflets is serrated, then it's pretty easy to be able to tell the difference between silky dogwood and elderberry. Here are the elderberries. When you harvest elderberry, you should not harvest any red or green berries. See, these aren't ready yet. So you'll have to come back for these, but on, in the same bush, we have some ripe ones. So when you harvest elderberry, you're gonna have to come back several times to the same area to get all of the ripe berries if you want to um, harvest thoroughly. But you can also be a sustainable forager and just harvest the ripe ones where you are and then go elsewhere and harvest only the ripe ones. Bushes that I've harvested in the past each year end up producing more berries. And the berries are a fruit. So it is sustainable to harvest just the fruit. Let's talk about other ways to identify elderberry. Here is the elderberry bark. Elderberry bark has many bumps on it called lenticels. When you feel up and down the stem on the bark, it feels like braille. Each little bump is raised. Now let's take a look at the silky dogwood bark. The silky dogwood bark doesn't have raised bumps. It has more like linear bumps and lines and they don't feel like braille and they tend to have a green or a red background. This one actually has a green background. So let's talk a little bit more about elderberry itself. Elderberry is actually a poisonous bush. The leaves are poisonous, the bark is poisonous, and the unripe berries are poisonous. Here in New England, you can eat the it, ripe berries, they need to be ripe. You can eat the ripe berries, but a small amount because there's components in elderberry, the leaves, the bark, the unripe berries especially, and still a little bit in the ripe berries that your body will turn into cyanide. Um, European elderberry, Sambucus nigra, can't even be eaten at all, only the flowers. So. Uh, the Sambucus nigra berries, even when they are ripe like this, should not be eaten raw because they have higher levels of that cyanide-like component. So what do we do with these? Well, the flowers can be eaten raw and they're really the only thing that doesn't contain any toxins. And the flowers can be made into tea, delicious liqueur, um, essential oil. And then now that we have the berries, of course you can make 
elderberry syrup. You can make elderberry juice, um, elderberry tea, elderberry tincture. So these berries need to be processed in some way and, and um, introducing heat to them will cook away that toxin. And then what do you have? You have an incredibly high in antioxidant food with um, a wonderful antiviral and antibacterial qualities. So here we're looking at this panicle. We have to wait. We can't take this one because there's still some green and red berries on it. So even though there's some that are ripe, you could be really patient and just take the only the ripe ones from this. Or you can come back when it's ripe like this. And what I do to collect these is I will just snap off the flower head here. and take that home and freeze all of it in the freezer and then it's easier to get each one of these off once they're frozen and then I'll process them into some syrup.